Okay, let's turn to Psalm 111 and we'll begin from there. Pastor, just a minute. Are you connected to YouTube? Yes, it's already live on YouTube. Yeah, okay. Okay. Psalm 111 and uh, we'll just, let's pray. Father, we thank you this evening once again for your precious presence and for all the saints who are gathered and continue to speak to our hearts this evening as we focus on the Psalms and bring forth your character and your nature and continue to bless our study of the Psalms in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, we can turn to Psalm 111. <clears throat> this Psalm is known as a Psalm for people who study the Word of God. <laughs> this is a very, it seems to be like a very short Psalm and you know, but behind the whole Psalm is this thought this is, this is the one where people who studied it, it basically explains, you know, how a student of the Bible, how a believer uh, begins to please God. And the way that to, for that to happen is to grow in the understanding of the truth. So we'll talk about this and there is a key verse in verse 9, which I'll talk a little bit about which has a specific word that is mentioned there. And then you will go forward, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> verse 1. How do you grow in the understanding of the truth? How do you please God? And remember, if you can put a title to this psalm, it will always be the one, okay? The one who studies his word, who gets to know God through the word. The man who, or the woman who studies, right? So, <clears throat> verse 1. Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. Now, this is a common uh, beginning, but look at what he says further. In the company of the upright and in the assembly. So, it's talking about not just on your own praising God, not only on your own, but also in the assembly. What does it mean? You want to understand God in truth. The first place is worship. Worship privately and in the church. Okay? The lower you go before God, okay, the more he will instruct you. And the key word is humility. The more humble you become before God, the more he will raise you up. The more you submit to God, the more he will grow in his understanding. We can never reach a place where we think that we have learned the word enough. I have so much mastery over the word. I can give a sermon at any time. I can teach a class. I can do a Bible study. No. No, you, the way to know God is to be humble before him, is to worship him. You may get an opportunity to share the scriptures with two people or one person on the phone. Never forget to humble yourself before God, before uttering his word, the truth, to share it with someone else. It is very easy to pick up a phone and talk to people and give them a devotional, give them a thought, say a verse, but let that verse come from God. Let that verse truth come from God because the, because the Lord knows what the other person needs. But here is how I become the person of understanding of the truth. This is how I get to know how I please God. The first thing that I do is I begin to worship. And in worship, I am not thinking about myself. In worship, I am thinking about God. In worship, I am not so occupied with my emotions and I am occupied in truth. You know, in our ministry, we have been taught that uh, when we worship God, whether we are singing, is it word-centric? Is it Bible-centric worship? Is it coming back to the scriptures? Because if it's just songs, if it's just singing, and there's no truth based upon it, then those songs will make me feel good for a little while, but that will not lead me anywhere. When you are worshiping, whether it's privately or in the church. Make it a habit to remember a verse. Think of a verse in the midst of the worship, in the midst of prayer. You know, think of a verse. It's always good to go back and be focused on a verse in that service. You know, maybe before you even begin to sing, you start thinking of a verse. Come prepared when you approach God uh, come prepared, at least have one verse in mind. You know, we have so many details that we come and talk before we start church. But how about coming with one verse in mind? 
and approaching God with based on that one verse. And then in the worship, meditating upon what God is saying. See, that's how we will grow in truth because we are focusing back on God, not on ourselves. You know, worship is not so much for making me feel myself very good because I feel light, I feel great, I feel reverential. That's, that's good in worship. Those things are important. But real worship is, you know, when I am submitted to God, I am waiting to receive from Him. The second way is this: this is for people who study to get to know God. Is you begin to see God in His work. This is verses two to six. So you, how do I grow in the understanding of the truth? First, with worship, I humble myself, and this is humility in personal study, in also in the. Uh, in the church, because that's what he says, in the company of the upright and in the assembly. So, you know, you cannot say I worship alone at home and, you know, and then be proud in the church. <laughs> work, Or you can be humble in the church, quiet, singing, but like you're, you're, you're like, you know, you don't have reverence for God in the scripture when you're alone. Those things won't help you grow in the truth. You need reverence both places. You need that. Verses 2 to 6, you, need, you begin to know God through his work. Great are the works of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. You see that word there? Studied. They are studied by who? Those who delight in God's word. Those who delight in God's word will also be interested in God's work. You know, it is very difficult to be interested in God's work without God's word. And this is, you know, I would say this is uh, the problem with quick Christianity these days. What do I mean quick Christianity? I need a reference. I go to my mobile phone. I quickly find the answer. I quickly find on websites. I go to Google. I find all the answers. But you know what has happened is I am not interested in his word and therefore I am not interested in his work. A lot of people get interested in God's work, you know, sometimes because they feel satisfied doing something for God. They still have the, you know, I would say like the karma mentality. <laughs> they still have a karma good works mentality because they feel if I'm doing something for God, then, you know, I feel good. But, but what is the verse saying in Psalm 111 verse 2? He's saying very simply, great are the works of the Lord and they are studied by those who delight in them. They are studied. If you study his word, then you will delight in his work also. Not the reverse, you know, a lot of times it can be the reverse. Like, I love to do God's work, but I never study his word. Well, good luck. I shouldn't use that word, but be happy what I, is all that I can say. Because it won't last too long. It won't, be, it won't be long before you get offended soon. It won't be long before you realize you're not able to do much. It won't be long before you realize things are not always falling into place. Why? Because you have kept his work more important than his word. And whenever you keep the work more important than his word, they, you can expect trouble. Really. I mean, you know, and this is, this, 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 you have, this we learn. <laughs> Sometimes I will say this many times and people still don't listen. And it's, you know, we can only say that and love them, encourage them, but someday they will learn. And wherever the work is more important than the word, sorry, it will, the results will never be the same. Can you imagine the opportunities that God gives us and we preferred to do the opportunities and fulfill and work in those opportunities without even consulting it? Well, you, you missed out. We missed out, you know. Verse 3, Splendid and majestic are his works and his righteousness endures forever. He has made his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He has given food to those who fear him. He will remember his covenant forever. He has made known to his people the power of his works in giving them the heritage of the nations. You know, what's he saying here? He's saying it's whether you take history, whether it is science, whatever you see in the world, you cannot ignore God's work. You can read human history. And you will find God in it. You can look at science and be a great science student. 
but you cannot keep God out of it. Because in every detail of life, God's work is evident. His power, His wisdom, His order. Like how can I look at creation and ignore the creator? How can I look at the order in the skies and yet ignore the one who put them there? How can I look at my own self and the world that we live in and look at, yeah, it looks chaotic, but if we look at ourselves and yet ignore the one who made us. Like it's, it's unbelievable, the human heart. It's unbelievable. And imagine for a student of the Bible, imagine a Christian who sees God's work, sees the church and stays away from the word. <laughs> it's unbelievable. It should not be this way, <laughs> but it, is, it can happen, you know. But how will I get to know him? I will study his word by worshipping and then finding him in, finding his power. You know, I look for God. I see God in every work. In the works that are in the world that is going on. Where I, where even where there is evil is prevalent. Where there is a lot of evil going on. And God is not the author of evil. God is not the author of evil. But we really do not know what God is doing in that sense. But we know that he is at work. The human mind, the human heart are amazing. But God is greater than those things. And so in the works that we see in the world, the works that we see in the, you know, in life, we acknowledge God. But you know what is greater? When we go through the scriptures, when we see someone's life being touched by God, then we acknowledge that there is God. We see the work of God in the life of a person. Yeah, my so-and-so person came to church and their life was A. And now their life is completely transformed. You know what's, what, what you admire? You admire the work of God in that person's life. Why? Because when you're studying the word, you realize it's only God can do these things. The Holy Spirit transforms. God does those amazing things. And whenever a student of the word is, they will never cease, they will never stop to acknowledge the work of God. They will always see the work of God in everything that happens. You know, not in that sense. You know, Richard Boomerang's wife, uh, they say that she had like no evil thought in her mind. They were in a train station and they saw a man like, you know, pickpocketing someone else. And Richard Wumran's wife took money from her hand and put it in that man's pocket. And Richard Wumran is saying to her, he's a pickpocket. She says, no, 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 no. The poor guy needs money. <laughs> I mean, you're, and you're like, okay, you know, this has gone way too far right now, you know. But in that, in that funny way, also thinking about it, I was thinking, like, imagine her trust in the work of God that maybe someday God will change this person. Or only he can. And that's amazing to see. Because is that the heart? And that's the heart of Jesus, isn't it? Like, would, would Jesus do the same thing with this guy? Would he? And you, 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 you obviously know the answer. <laughs> you obviously know the answer what Jesus would do. He would minister to him. He would love him. You know? And you're like, how silly. Yeah. But that's how we get to know God. Like, you know, the work of grace, the work of love in our life. You can't put a price on those things. But that's how you grow in the knowledge of God. That's how you get to know God. When you see him in his work in your life and the life of others. You know? Never stop believing what God can do in someone else's life. He can do amazing things. <clears throat> Verses 7 to 9. How do I grow in my understanding of God? By worship, right? I see God in his works. And then I see God in his word. This is 7 to 9. The works of his hands are truth and justice. And all his precepts are sure. They are upheld forever and ever. They are performed in truth and in uprightness. He has sent redemption to his people. He has ordained his covenant forever. 
holy and awesome is his name. Now, does anyone have a King James Bible? If you're reading, you will see verse 9, it says, holy and reverent is his name. Okay? You will see that word reverent there. Now, I want to make it a point. And this is, uh, the word reverent is a title given to Jesus Christ. No man has right over this title. Never call any human being reverent. That is not biblical. That's a, this title of reverend is never for a man. It is always for God. And so if, you know, I know in certain traditional, you know, backgrounds and denominations, the word title is given reverend to the senior or uh, pastor or whatever, but it's not correct. Reverend is never a title given to a human being. It is for Jesus Christ only. Holy and reverend is he. And that's Christ. But the point is this. How do you see and how do you understand, grow in understanding of God? You see God in his word. You know? Why? Because the book does not, the Bible does not contradict itself. You know? Theories, assumptions, prophecies, you know, made by human beings, they will all come and go. People will bring new teachings, great thoughts. Many books are written. Those things will come and go. But God's word stands up on its own. And therefore, I am not saying don't read books. What I am saying is make sure the amount of scripture you read is way more than you read a book. Because sometimes we can get so involved in reading books, 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 books that we forget the scripture. I personally, what I like to do is when I'm reading a book, I write, I like to keep the Bible next to me. And, uh, uh, you know, wherever there is a passage, then I like to see a verse. Or if the, if the author has quoted verses, then I like to refer to the verse before I go on. It may, you may say, yeah, but I'm reading a book. Yeah, but keep the Bible next to you. That's why I prefer sound writers who use uh, Bible references in their books and not just people who just, you know, write long essays. Well, that's my uh, take. You can do as you please. But <clears throat> I personally believe that, you know, the intake of the scripture should be way more than the intake of the book. You know, and uh, that's why I love Dr. Stevens' uh, booklets. We posted one on the group today. Joy comes in the morning. It's an amazing booklet. Read it with your Bible open, you know, and then you will you will be really blessed. And you know that is how we need to know. That is how we see God in His Word. And then verse ten it says, "The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and good understanding <clears throat> have all those people who do His commandments. His praise endures forever." So as we said, like the first thing we talked about was. Uh, Psalm 111 is for those who study the word. How do, we, how do I grow in pleasing the Lord and understanding of his truth? One, worship. Second, works. Third, his, I see God in his word. And then fourth and most important is I obey what God teaches me to do. You obey what God teaches you to do. It's simple, you know. Remember, studying of the Bible is not just an academic exercise. That I studied it, I read it, I finished my Bible college. Uh, it must involve us completely. What do I mean? I can know the Bible and not do anything about it. Won't please God. Doesn't please God. You know? All of truth, that is God's word, all of it. Remember Jesus would say in John 8, 31 and 32, know the truth and the truth will set you free. The word truth setting you free did not mean that once you get knowledge of the Bible, then you are free. He didn't mean that. You know what he meant? He said, first, you get to know the word. You love the truth. You learn the truth. And then you live the truth. So because you develop a love, and that's what we saw in verses 2 to 6, you develop the love for the word, you learn the word, and then you live the word. Then it will set you free. If your word, what you have learned, 
never translates into obedience or never translates or never ends up uh, you don't end up obeying the word you will never be set free you will have the knowledge of how to be free but you will not be set free you will see other people set free and you will wonder what's wrong with me the only one problem you have not learned to live the truth and i'm not meaning it in a legalistic way i'm meaning it in a personal way. you know i'm not saying that you follow rules regulations and you know many times people have this mindset the bible is a rule book no the bible is a guide book no the bible is all about rules no the bible is about setting you free you know it's about setting you free how i mean which other book will tell you how to go to heaven <laughs> i mean they may give you 100 things to do to go to heaven but will you, are you able to do it no but the bible simply reveals heart of god there and so that's the key you know that knowing and understanding and growing in a relationship with god is based upon obedience if there is obedience in the child of god then they will be set free in their mind in their heart and in their emotions but if there is constant compromise constant skipping over constant in manipulating first to suit yourself personally there can never be true freedom and god is gracious he is loving he will allow you to do it but then you come back to the same point where you have to say okay i rather do it you know and he is a gracious and compassionate god but love the truth love the scripture love it learn it with all your heart learn it you know learn it and learn it from the right sources do not be so dependent upon youtube and google to learn that you don't have time to read your own bible don't use secondary means and get knowledge faster it won't last read the word meditate upon it seek help get good teaching and then move on the good things in life are not you know get rich quick the good things in life always take time you know always take time cooking food in a microwave is good but when mom makes it then mom makes it right <laughs> everyone wants mom's hand cooked food <laughs> yeah but i can get it faster done in a ready to quick meal and i can put it in a uh you know i can go and do it and i can you know i can put it in the micro and this and that and all that stuff yeah that's okay you know that's okay <laughs> but good things take time become a student of the word take time to read study and pray that's how you will get to know in going in the god okay so that's psalm 111 we are moving to psalm 113 now okay psalm 113 and this is a short like a manual on how on worship psalm 113 is on worship was one praise the lord praise your servants of the lord praise the name of the lord you know when you see that verse it talks about who is worshiping god who is worshiping servants of the lord means all people everyone god's people those who have trusted his name those who want to live for him all who is to worship all blessed be the name of the lord from time forth and forever when is the right time to worship god <laughs> right now <laughs> when is the right time you know worship what should i do you know so when should i end never so what's the start time to worship god now what's the end time to worship god never you start worship and you never stop worship <laughs> worshiping does not mean only singing okay it is lifting up god in your mind through his word it includes singing it includes prayer it includes the study of the word it includes all those things meditation is a form of worship you know bible college is the highest form of worship you are knowing god verse by verse that's bible college that's what we are doing right now we are worshiping so when do i start to worship immediately when do i stop worshiping never You remember that song we sing let every breath no you know, or something like that let everything that has breath praise the lord right that's that's basically idea 
who worships all the servants of the Lord when, now, and never stop. Verse 3, from the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. <laughs> so, how many days? <laughs> Where should I worship? Wherever you are. East to the west, north to the south, no matter where you are, there is never a place that you cannot find to praise God. Never. So look at the worship manual. He's saying who worships? All the servants of God. When do you worship? Right now and never stop. Where do you worship? Every place possible. So this is a short manual on worship. You know? You're asking a question, how do I worship? Where do I worship? Who should worship? Psalm 113 is your answer. Okay. The Lord is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. This is verses 4 to 9 gives you the reason why we should worship. Okay. Why should we worship? Verse 4, he is high above all nations. His glory is above the heavens. Who is like our God? Who is enthroned on high? Who humbles himself to behold? The things that are in heaven and in earth. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. He makes the barren woman abide in the house as a joyful mother in the child of children. Praise God. This is an amazing portion of scripture. You read these verses, why we worship him? Look at this. God is enthroned on high who humbles himself to behold the things that are in heaven. He raises the poor from the dust. You know who the word poor is? <clears throat> the word is the word poor basically means he, the person is spiritually nothing from the dust. And he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. Remember Mephibosheth in David's kingdom, sitting at his table? That's a good illustration of us. We were in Lodibar. Lodibar basically means barren. We were the crippled ones because of sin. And God makes us sit at his table. And this is positionally speaking in heaven with his princes. All because of grace. Why do we worship? Because of his grace. Because of what he has done. You know, he raised the poor from the dust. Those who are nothing. Who are in nothing. People think that who have, you know, some sometimes people may say, I have this much and that much and, you know, the wealthy people of the world. And, but in the eyes of God, they are in the dust. They are ash heap. It's all going to be burned down one day. <laughs> but those who trust him, he will make them sit with princes. He makes the barren woman abide in the house as a joyful mother of children. Praise God. In the Old Testament, the barren woman was always looked down upon as cursed. Someone you know who was cursed because not being able to give birth was looked upon that way. And he says that, she is a joyful mother of children. <laughs> she is a joyful mother of children. This is what God does. This is what God does, you know. And so he has taken us from the ash heap and makes us sit with princes in the heavenly places. Can you imagine that you are in your house today? I am, I am today. But reality, we are in heaven with Christ today in our position, waiting for it to become a reality someday. In our position, we're already there. So when Jesus is looking at you and me, yes, he knows that we are here on the earth in this place, and this is our home in front of a laptop or a phone. But he also is know, he knows that we are with him in the heavenly places. Positionally, we are there. And so we are looked upon as brothers and sisters of Christ. That's why we worship. Like, think, think this. Will we be able to stop worshiping when we see him? No. Why? Because he's face to face, that's why. But even now, positionally we are with him. So how can we stop to worship? Where do I worship? Who worships? Servants of God. Where do when do I worship? Never stopping. Where do I worship? 
every place available. Right? And why should I worship? Because of his grace. Because of salvation. Because of what God has done. Amen? So, I'll stop here with these two Psalms and we can open it up for question answers. And if anyone else has a comment to make, please go ahead, feel free, and you can share. Uh, same question as last time. How does this now correspond to Deuteronomy? Yes, it corresponds to Deuteronomy and the main theme is the word of God. Okay. 107 onwards. Yeah. Psalm 107 onwards corresponds to Deuteronomy and the theme will be the word of God. Okay. All right.